Hey, welcome back to Geek Toolkit. I'm Joe Farrow, and today I want to talk about PLA prints and them being outside. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is talk about my experiments with this because I got really, really concerned about a very particular PLA print that I was looking to put outside. It's this guy right here. So this is one of my gnomes that I put together. Now, this is from Zandoria. The, uh, he's basically has these STLs up on Colts 3D. He also has an Etsy store to purchase them. And I uh, printed this out. I, I bought his files, printed this out. My wife has been painting them. It's still mid paint. I've actually got a number of these and I'm really excited about putting them outside, but it's taken a lot of time and a lot of filament and a lot of printing, and a lot of tuning, and a lot of sanding to get that to there. And I wanted to know what happens if I put them outside. Now I asked around on the internet and I got a lot of interesting answers but they were all all over the place. Now the thing is, I'm an engineer, and so I like numbers and I like tolerances. So when I asked if I could put it outside, they'd say, well, no, it'll melt in the sun, it's PLA. And that didn't make sense to me. I know that when I print PLA, I set my nozzle to like 220 Celsius. I know outside here, I'm, you know, I'm in Washington state, it gets about 100 degrees. We had a really strong heat wave when I did this experiment at 109 degrees. And I just didn't understand how do I get to 109 Fahrenheit to 220 Celsius? Like, it just didn't make sense. Like, why would it melt? That's nowhere near what I need to do to extrude it. And so when I started studying that, I learned a lot of interesting things. And one of them is a, a thermoplastic, which is what 3D printing filament typically is, something where you heat it up to melt it. It has a melting zone. It's not like there's just like a, a temperature it hits that and boom, it starts to melt. There's like a temperature where it gets a little sticky and then there's a temperature where it becomes liquid. Now that means that the, the first zone where it starts to get sticky, they call it the glass transition temperature. The glass transition temperature for PLA is 60 Celsius or about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, well now with all this knowledge, I was still confused because it only got to 109 degrees. So why would I have any worry about PLA melting outside? I was thinking maybe some of these people are having these issues. They're putting PLA in like the desert or something. I, I didn't understand. Well, then I hit thing number two that I didn't know about. We talk a lot about the air temperature when we talk about temperature. We say it's 100 degrees out or whatever for weather temperature. But the temperature you really have to worry about is surface temperature. And that varies greatly. Okay, uh, it's 120, uh, hottest part of the day here. Let's kind of... Well, actually, it'll get a little bit hotter too. I'll do this one more time. But right now, this is the Benchy print. It's not a super clean print, but what we're seeing here is no distortions or anything. It's not feeling melty or anything. Uh, it's 104 Fahrenheit right now. This right here is a wire holder. It's not bendy at all. And this was, a, I think, a 30% infill. It's definitely got more infill than some of these other prints. This is a 5% infill uh, Death Trooper skull. I'm not seeing any warping or anything. I'm pressing on this. Now the bottom of this is very thin. You can see where it like actually the layer was so thin it actually bled through. That was on the print itself. But knowing that this is thin, I expected it to break or be damaged. Everything on this looks fine. These are all raw PLA prints. There's no priming on these. Uh, this one, however, is primed. This is a dwarf, or I'm sorry, the gnome from Zandoria. Uh, his creations on Colts 3D. The leg broke off because they dropped it on this concrete. My daughter painted and this was primed. If you look at the top of the hat here, I'd expect that to be flexible, nothing there. Uh, this is here. Now where the leg broke, it's kind of handy because you can see the infill. It's 5% infill. So not a lot going on here for walls or infill, but this thing, you know, even the beard here, pretty stable. So uh, prime print looks pretty good at 104 Fahrenheit. Now we're gonna go over here to this one. This one's uh, very interesting. This was a larger uh, gnome print. And this was one where the nozzle clogged. You can see there's a lot of damage to this one. And it ended up being a failed print, but I thought it was really handy uh, for a number of reasons. The main is at the top of this, you really get a feel for if this thing gets tacky, just, you know, this is basically just PLA strands at this point. And you see it's a bit glistening. And the thing is, this is a little, you know, a little bit squishy up here. Um, a bit squishier than it was when it was hot out. The other thing that I noticed here is the shield has a bit of flex to it. Um, you know, there's not much going on in that shield's very thin walled. And so this kind of goes along with my hypothesis that these are probably not gonna do super great holding weight in the heat, uh, which is also in, is consistent with other 3D print videos I've seen. But really, 
this uh, this print right here doesn't it you know it feels solid for what it is but it does this is a little tacky so it is getting affected by the heat but nothing nothing drastic and you see you know when you have these five percent prints over here and they're looking fine I am thinking that we're gonna be okay now we're supposed to get to 113 today so I'll try this in a couple hours to just do a quick revamp but for now that's where we're at I did that experiment on the 109 degree Fahrenheit day and I had a number of different models. I actually had had a two foot tall uh, Tinkerbell that I printed using Luban that's been out there since December. So that was separate, but I put that out there on the concrete as well. And what I found out when I measured the concrete is the surface temperature of the concrete hit 140 degrees, which is 60 Celsius, which is what you set your bed to to make this a little bit more tacky and to make it stick better when you're putting down PLA. So then I had my aha moment. The surface temperature is really the thing that can destroy this. Now there's a number of other things that I learned, but these aren't from my experiments. This is from asking around to get other basically feedback and ideas and data. And a number of people mentioned that their PLA prints that were melting, they noticed were typically thinner with less infill or darker colors. So like a black PLA um, tends to absorb heat and hold it longer. And that makes sense, right? Like uh, the brick is in 109 degrees Fahrenheit, but it reaches 140 due to the nature of itself. So I could see where filament that's printed at different, uh, either with different colors or different infills, different thicknesses, all of those could matter. The other thing that matters quite a bit with PLA is if it's load bearing or not. Like, are you doing something that's structural, like a hook for like a planter or something, or are you doing something decorative? So at the end of this experiment, I felt pretty good because I understood air temperature versus surface temperature. I also found out that the grass was 20 degrees Fahrenheit cooler or about 46 Celsius, which put me in a pretty safe zone. So as long as they didn't put my uh, my little gnome here, actually it's nothing little about this guy's huge So at the end of this, I felt pretty good about putting my little gnome outside because the shade was even lower. It was about 80 Fahrenheit or 26 Celsius, which means that this guy could sit in the shade or under an apple tree and be very decorative and very, very safe. But I also thought that was a very interesting experiment because I had never really thought about the surface that you put something on when you're thinking about, you know, is it going to be okay outside? There's two other factors that you have to consider about being outside. One of them is humidity and how something affects is affected by humidity. Now the PLA print that I had outside that actually got snowed on and that's been out there for six months has been fine. That was the Tinkerbell print. But however, I have primed that print and I've also primed this gnome and of course painted them. And that was my plan for anything that was going outside. So that is something to think about is if you're thinking about humidity, it's like, are you priming it? Which kind of gives it a bit of a seal and a bit of protection against moisture. If you're going to put a raw PLA print out there, then you might want to consider priming because it's probably going to expand or contract, or you also might have the layers separate. I've seen that in other things, but I didn't see it in my experience, but they haven't been out there long enough. So I'm going to have to do a follow-up of this to say, how do these things do in the rain? And living in Washington, that'll be no problem to find out. The final thing you should know about anything you put outside for PLA or really anything is UV. Now ultraviolet rays are going to take your PLA and it's probably going to bleach it and change the color. So if you haven't painted it and didn't put on a UV protectant, if you put out raw PLA that's like a really cool color you love, it's probably going to get bleached out. And we've seen a number of videos and a number of people report this. So be aware of that. That's something else. There is a UV protectant that you can put on. Um, prints, you can prime them, paint them, and then put a UV protectant on. And that's what I plan on doing with my gnome here. My goal of this video is to actually follow it up in about six months or a year and say, how are these things doing? Because I will put them outside now that I feel like they don't have any danger from the heat. But I am a little bit worried about UV and moisture, so stay tuned for that. I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of Geek Toolkit. I'm glad to be out of my, like, basically my project month where I built a bunch of stuff and back to filming. We're going to share a bunch of these projects with you. I'll share a bit more about Luban, which is how I printed that gnome so tall, and also the Tinkerbell. Uh, that was a 24-inch tall print. I did these on Ender 3 Pros. Now, those Ender 3s, they're not modified or anything. I basically printed them in sections uh, using Luban, and then I put them together. 
Another video I expect to do soon is actually talking a little bit about how I finish these. There's a number of things I learned about finishing prints as far as smoothing them out, sanding them, and actually scraping them with a couple of tools and stuff to get them uh, basically as smooth as possible. I also learned some cool tricks like using super glue to actually smooth out a print really quickly and that worked really well. I was really surprised by that. There's also a uh, primer like filler primer that you can use. So I'll just do a video and talk about all of that stuff I learned in a future video. You see the latest version of Dynaframe behind me here. I've actually put a lot of work into that. I'll be doing an update there. By the way, I want to mention a really cool geek tool. This right here is a laser thermometer. They're really inexpensive. They basically shoot a red laser dot out and when that hits, they give you a measure of the temperature and then they keep track of the highest temperature on them. I'll put a link to Amazon below and I'll find one so that you can take a look at these things. Normally they're pretty inexpensive, but this thing was super useful for this video for figuring out things like the concrete, how hot it was versus the grass and shade and so on. Very cool infrared thermometer and it's just fun to kind of shoot lasers everywhere and see how hot things are. Thank you for joining me. I'm Joe Farrow Geek Toolkit. Until next time.